Well, hello. So I'm doing a quick little follow-up video here. Uh, this is a follow-up to my Dash Assault number four, where I did a data, Lil Boo and I did a data collection exercise where we took, a, took several orders and we did some calculations on our hard costs and our mileage and how much we spent and all that. So this past weekend, the 14th and the 15th, Saturday and Sunday, there was a, a bonus running. So $75 for 15 deliveries. Oh, and also, Para is back up and running. So I thought, well, what if I go out and go after that bonus, you know, because that obviously will increase your profit uh, overall. And what if I use Para and kind of do everything the way you should do it? You know, to really assess the orders as best you can. Uh, try to, you know, be careful about your mileage and all that. So I did that. And uh, I'm going to talk through some of the numbers and talk through some of my results. I think it was pretty interesting because, uh, you know, my results obviously were better, but they still weren't as uh, as good as I hoped. And I think there's probably some some refinements I still need to do. Oh, and I'm um, one of the things I'm real excited about, which you'll see in this video, is that uh, I found a new little little tool for my phone, which basically is a screen recorder. So I was able to record the dash as it happened. Oh, that was really neat. So I kind of effed this up. Well, actually, I didn't eff it up. I just, I learned. I learned as I went along. You see, I, I edited all my little uh, phone screen grab video together, and I did a voiceover. And then I realized too late that I could have done the voiceover on camera, and then I wouldn't have had all this black stuff in behind. So now, I want to have video in behind, but I don't want to re-record my voiceover. So I think I'm going to do is get real performance already with this. And uh, basically just watch, along with y'all, on camera, on screen, with the little guy kind of over here. I'll react in real time. Smoke my vape. Make a, a amusing color commentary when it is appropriate. Thank y'all for being patient with me. Here we go. We're going to start with Saturday, August 14th, 2021. That is me effing around on my phone. Uh, I, yeah, I got a charge phone. I got all of it. And here we go, looking for orders. I'm checking my phone, making sure Para is on. Oh, that's right. I had to, like, all my credentials had expired. Oh, so I got a Bellagio's Pizza new order. So at this time, I'm trying to mess around with 4.5 miles for $7. I don't have Para up. And I figure, no, I don't want to go across the river. So I said distance was too far. All right, so there we go. Full payout is now on. So I finally got that on. So then I go back to the Dash app. Do, 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 do. So it's 12.49. So I get a round table pizza, 1.4 miles, zero tip. I said, no thank you, I declined that one. Decline. Order is too small. I think I said, no tip. <laughs> Submit. Good for me. No tip. Thank you, Para. BlackRock, 4.5 miles, $6.25 for a $2 tip. I said, no thank you. Decline. Oh, no, wait a minute. I said yes on this one, because this is Saturday, I forgot. And then we picked up a Laughing Planet. That was a nice short one. Six seventy-five for one mile. And I was waiting to see what Para had to say about that. But I don't think Para gave me a, a text on that one, which was odd. Or did it? So yeah, I completed the Black Rock. Elephant's Delicatessen. That one had an $8.51 tip for 5.9 miles. So I said, okay, I'll give that a go. And I get over to Elephant's Delicatessen, and it is a big old huge 75-ish dollar order. 19 items. And here I am taking a look at all the wonderful items that are meant to be in there. Eight bottled waters, three oatmeal raisin cookies, and so on and so forth. Of course, at this point, the intelligent thing to do is to uh, tell us what's happening to help speed up pickups. It's a very uh, important, uh, helpful point. Always do that. Always cover your butt. I know my chair is creaking. I apologize. I need a less creaky chair. Maybe I should put some WD-40 on my chair. So I picked it up, 
confirm. Oh boy, and it has a refined map pin. But I took a photo and uh, left it at the door. Choose image. Oh yeah, I even got a picture. Here it is. Look at that beauty. I did not add a description. I think I read it bad. F difficult drop offs. I had to go in. And so, of course, then I'm outside my zone. Uh, I'm over in northwest Portland, so I got a hike back to uh, to Beaverton. Could have stopped my dash and restarted in Portland, but I did not want to dash in Portland. So I think I just headed on back to Beaverton. So then at that point, I get another elephant's delicatessen, uh, four miles for $4.75 with a $2 tip. I was like, no thank you, order is too small. There's my little car zipping along, speeding its way back into my zone. Bingo, bango, bongo, back in my zone. So then I get a Laughing Planet, 5.4 miles for $7. And uh, see, these things pop up, so I can't see the para. Estimated tip is $4. It's so annoying. I'm trying to figure it out. Five miles, seven dollars. I think I declined it. And then I was trying to figure out how to make my 7-Eleven. This one I decided not to do even though it had a tip because I didn't want to go do a scan. It contains alcohol and I did not want to go across the river and I did not want to have to scan a damn ID. Okay, so then I pick up a city tie, six seventy-five for four miles, and of course I can't see the pair of tip that quick because freaking DoorDash pops open a thing right on top of it and I have to go in to pair a four dollar estimated tip so I think okay well that should be a reasonably good one so I got decided to go ahead and take that one okay so then we have a Momiji one which I screwed up on because I was trying to look at the price and the estimated tip I was trying to look at the pair I saw the eight dollar tip and I'm like okay that looks good and I was trying to look at too many things at once and I did not twig to the fact that it was 11.5 mile order so this just really goes to show like one of the things obviously that works against you is you are trying to like assess these orders like literally in about 1.2 seconds if if that like half a second you're trying to figure out if you want to take it now you could take a little bit more time you don't have to do it that fast but you're also trying to drive you're also trying to just you know do a whole bunch of things so one of the things i need to get better at is actually taking a pause and thinking through if I want to take these orders. Because this one, even though it was twelve seventy five, it had a reasonably good tip behind it. It had that $8 tip. Um, 11.5 miles still kind of, you know, you're still not making a whole ton of money. Because I went a way far, a, a fur piece for this particular one. So, so yeah, I'm, I got on the road at like 2.38, picked it up, and then I'm finally getting there by like 3.05. So, but I finally got there. So, I mean, and I was supposed to deliver by 329, so that wasn't too bad. And uh, it was all the way out in the middle of Beaverton. So I went to complete my delivery steps. Take a photo, no contact, leave it at my door. I think, oh shit, I love how it shows how I take the photo. Let's, let's see what kind of photo I got. Look at that beautiful photo I got. That is fantastic. And I think I gave this one a frowny face because it was another far distance. But, you know, if I had taken the time I would have figured it out oh, and then of course the Wi-Fi doesn't do too great far delivery distance confirm all right so that was did get my eight dollar tip and a four dollar and seventy five cent delivery fee just just amazing so then I pick up a couple of double orders of cookies and Juan Colorado and what I'm seeing as a I saw a combined I saw an estimated tip of $11, so that was one thing that I got to say was a little bit, again, when you're trying to assess all this stuff, you got these two orders stacked on top of each other, you don't know what each one of them is doing, so again, this would be a good place to try to figure out like how to take a second and dig for more information, because I saw, I kind of looked at it as a combined unit. Um, but as it turned out, it did not turn out to be the best, uh, the best separately. So, so then I started having weird app issues where my dash kept getting paused for no apparent reason. So I had these two, 975 for 4.9 miles. And of course I couldn't see para. Para, again, everything pops up over the top of each other. I look at, it's got an estimated $4 tip for 4.9 miles. I was like, no, I don't think so. 
But then when I went back through my offer history, uh, it looked like these might have been better. So again, hard to figure out the figure out the information. So I know I declined those two. And then I think I will, and then it's another 20 minutes before I get another offer. So, so yeah, I'm just kind of sitting at near Din Tai Fung because it's a hot spot. And, uh, and then I'll just be sitting there waiting like a sucker. Hey, your current dash has been paused for no reason. Okay, I'm like, fine. So I actually close out the app. I pause the order and unpause the order to, to see if it'll clear it out. I think I even restarted my phone at one point. Now I'm still just sitting there. And then I think I waited, it's like 4.16 now. I think I waited there like 10 minutes and I was like, man, I ain't getting nothing here. Really wanted to get some Din Tai Fung. And it just pauses again for no reason. Couldn't figure it out. Still looking for orders. Still sitting near Din Tai Fung. Then it just pauses again. I'm like, man, come on. And then I get a Safeway order. And by this time, I'm pretty much done for the day. I get a message from a friend. We talk about having some pizza and watching some wrestling. So I wanted to finish up this Safeway order. And so then at this point, like... I'm trying to open the app, close the app, restart my phone. I miss a whole bunch of orders, like I miss a Chipotle and a Dairy Queen and a Subway. Uh, and I'm starting to get all these catch-up texts from Para telling me, like, you know, what what my total is and all that. So at this point, I'm pretty much, like, ready to be done. And I'm getting all these catch-up texts from uh, DoorDash saying, hey, new order. And I'm like, man, just stop. There's too much going on here. So I'm like, okay, I'm at Safeway. I'm going to pick up this order. So I do my shopping. Here we go. That's a shop and deliver order. So I go and I get all the stuff. Four items. There's like some hummus and some triscuits and some potatoes and some tampons. And I'm like, okay, let's go get all this fantastic stuff. So, of course, I find the baked potato salad. I have to enter the exact weight, and I walk around some more. Oh, I found the hummus. Good for me. Yay. Let's go see if we can find those triscuits. Oh, I found the triscuits. All that's left are the Tampax Pocket Radiant Tampons Regular Absorbency Unscented 14 Count. What do you think's gonna happen, my friends? What do you think? Place your bets right now as to whether or not I'm gonna be able to find these Tampax Pocket Radiant Tampons Regular Absorbency unscent Unscented 14 Count. Yeah, contact the customer. Hi. Tampons you want aren't in stock. And of course, there's something weird about the DoorDash text thing. Can't type very fast. Unavailable in the size you want. These are the only size of the brand you want. And I get me a picture. Tampax Radiant. It's like 28 count. Double size. What do you think? You think the customer is going to... Larger box, 28 count. And so forth. Think the customer is going to get back to me? No. I stand there for a bit of time. And uh, I get no response. So I head to the check. Okay, so this would be Sunday, and I started with a Taco Bell that I decided not to take, and a $3 tip, 14.7 miles, I don't think so. Distance is too far, there was a Buffalo Gap that I decided not to take, 9.4 miles for $7.25, no thank you, I think I can pass that, so I did take the Bobby Cahen, now I should have taken, there was a Giorgio Oven Fresh Pizza that had a great tip, but it didn't give me the ability to get to that, so I don't know how I was not able to get to that, but I got to this stupid Bobby Cahen one, which wasn't quite as good, but oh well, so I took that one, and off we go. I'm looking through. I declined one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine before I took any. Okay, so then I was outside my zone. I got a McDonald's, 675. I declined it with a quickness. And then I got a bed and breakfast burrito, which had an estimated payout of $14, estimated tip of $8.13. Now, this is one of those situations where I get there, and there's two orders waiting for me. Now, do you see anything on that screen which indicates, oh, the fact that it says two orders. Yeah, it does. It says two orders. Ha. Huh. 
So there's two orders there, easy to overlook. I just saw that on the screen right now. Finally got them, finally confirmed pickup. So then we had Biscuits Cafe. Now Biscuits Cafe was a pain in the butt. This is one of those places where they have about 18 different orders just sitting there waiting. Delivery does not exist in database. Well, isn't that interesting? So I went to Biscuits Cafe. They had about five orders ready, but not for my customer. And I asked and they said, well, that one's not going to be ready for about 15 minutes. And I said, well, hmm, DoorDash, why don't you give me one of the ones that's actually sitting here instead of making me wait 15 minutes for something that ain't ready. So I waited a bit. I don't think I waited too long on this one. I went up and I unassigned it at 11.08 because they told me it was going to be 10, 15 more minutes. I said, no, thank you. So I uh, put down order not ready and I submitted and it said, oh, please don't. And so then I went back out to my car, and uh, and then I got a Five Guys, which was 6.3 miles for $6.50 for a $3 tip. And I was like, eh, well, no, I'm not too excited about that. So I'm still in the parking lot for biscuits, and I get another one pop up here for biscuits, and I think, well, hey, maybe it's one of those ones that's already ready already. Wouldn't that be nice? So, and it's four items, 1.9 mile for a 762 tip. So I'm like, well, okay, maybe it's one of the ones that's already ready. Cool. So I say, all right, well, let's give this one more try. So I go in, and of course, it's not one of the ones that I know is sitting there because I know the names of the two that are already there. And I go in and I wait and I say, well, you know, I've already made a kind of a fool of myself leaving last time. So I'll give this one a little bit more time. And uh, so it's 11.10, do my little CYA, store busy, drive through busy, everything busy. Thank you for the feedback. We'll use it to improve. Hmm, well, we'll see about that, DoorDash. And the clock just ticks. Do, 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 do. Da, 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 da. It says 11.26. Yeah, uh, so at this point I said, well, boy, this is ridiculous. So, order not ready. I am unassigning. And then I'm like, I'm out of here. No more biscuits for me. I can't do this biscuits nonsense no more. So I got out of that parking lot got out, got on the open road, and I got me a Din Tai Fung. Now, this Din Tai Fung had a big estimated tip of about $12. It was a $13. Now, it was 9.7 miles, but for that, for that price, that is a reasonable, that is a reasonable recompense for that. Now, TP has always told me, like TP, my, my, my buddy Dasher out here in Beaverton has always said, Din Tai Fung and Cheesecake Factory are good orders. You will always get a good tip. And uh, on the, the, the two Din Tai Fung orders I got today, they were both excellent. So TP, tip of the hat to you, my friend. You know what you're talking about. The only problem with Din Tai Fung is it's a bit hard to find a place to perch. Parking at Washington Square is kind of a pain, but that was just fine. So I went and I got it. And I drove it out to Tualatin, and uh, it it wasn't it was not terrible. There we go. I had to climb stairs too, all the way at the top. Got a good picture. Always when you're getting a picture, always get the number. That is a little top tip. Always get the the house number if you can. If if there's any way of doing it, if you have to turn your camera or whatever, because that's a good CYA. All right, so I was out of my zone, getting back. Ah, we got a Cheesecake Factory. Yes, we like the Cheesecake Factory. So I got there, and uh, that one was a bit of a wait. It was a pickup by 1226. It was a big order, too. It was two big old bags and some drinks and all sorts of stuff. And this one, as I, as I recall, was a bit of a, uh, a drive. But again, I mean, you know, with a big order and uh, a good tip, it, it it was worth it. This one was fine. This one this one did not infuriate me. So I had to put in all my CYA stuff, and then they wanted me to confirm, and I said I ain't gonna confirm nothing. So we had to get it out there by twelve thirty nine. Oh, actually, this one was pretty close. Actually, this one wasn't too bad. This is a this was a good 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 order. 
Uh, this one had like a, no oh, golly Moses, what did this one have? This one had like a $11, $12 tip on this one. $13 tip, something like that. This is a, this is a good tip. Got myself a picture. I had to flip it around. I see, the, here's an example. See how I had to flip my camera around so I could get the number, which was kind of above the garage? Always get the number. Always get the number in your photo. That is another top tip. Oh, it was only 850, but still a good tip. It wasn't too bad. I was up to 12 of 15. And I was outside my zone, as I usually am, pretty far out. And then I'm going to have several that I think I'm going to decline. Well, see, I the Dairy Queen, $6, 9.9 miles. That was a zero tip on that one, I think. Definitely a no. That Dairy Queen always has a super, super long drive through and they don't let you use the drive through so no thank you. I'll just pass on that one up to 13 of 15 and uh, then I'm gonna pick up a Chipotle and that was 2.8 miles 775 for three dollar tip I thought okay yes yeah, that's fair that's fine it's not too far and the other thing I like about Chipotle is you often get a second order put on top which is which I actually kind of like because you're already there. Why not grab another one? Get me another little Chipotle add-on there. It's an additional 1.7 miles, 8 bucks, additional $4 tip. I'm like, all right, cool. It's all good. It's all very good. So I get to the Chipotle. This is the one out on Hall Boulevard. It's kind of a weird one to get into. You actually know where to turn. And the nice thing about getting a double order is that Theoretically, since I was at 13 of 15, this double order should have put me over the top for my bonus. But funnily enough, once I uh, once I delivered the second one, it did not register it. So I ended up taking another one. So did my CYA, and in this case, to be quite honest, I did my CYA because I had to go to the bathroom. So. <laughs> That's a little admission. That's a little guilty. That's a little guilty admission. Please double check items. This restaurant has missed items before. Well, you know that, my friend, is the restaurant's problem, not mine. And then we had a beautiful little refined map pin, which uh, the thing about it is, when it says this has a refined map pin, tap directions to get to the refined location, and then once you arrive, just look around. That's what the refined map pin means. That's not that's not a refinement. That's basically saying go to this place and then hunt. It's like okay, that doesn't give me any more information other than you're going to have to hunt around. I mean, I suppose that could be classified as information of a kind, but really not very helpful information. Get the number I didn't bother with a frowny face. Okay, so then we have to deliver the second Chipotle. Bingo, bango, bongo, easy peasy. Oh, apparently I got my feet. Oh, there's that number I had to get. All right. Delivery complete. And then I'm like, well, so wait a minute. That, that did 15. What is my 14 of 15 deliveries? I, was, I think I was getting a little annoyed by this time. I'm like, well, wait a minute. I think I, I went out of the dash and tried to get it to refresh and everything so yeah i went i went out of my dash went back into my dash i'm like hey i did 15 sucker let's go i want my 75 bucks i want to be done with this nonsense i got stuff to do today besides dashing i should have done this dash in the evening man all all the peak pay was yeah after five and there's like three dollar peak pay i mean i would have made more money but it probably would have been a lot more annoying that was jersey mike's nine dollars 4.1 mile for a four dollar tip i declined this one i don't quite know why i did i probably should have taken it wouldn't have been too bad i think i was just like man i didn't want to do it i guess i was kind of waiting to see if it would give me my my bonus because i was like i don't don't shouldn't have to take another one and uh, so then I'm still futzing around trying to figure out why it's not giving me my, you know, why it's not updating. Kind of moping along the edge of my zone, as you can see, a little mopey car, just moping, moping in the gray. Mope, mope, mope. And then I got another Dintai Fung order, and I was like, heck yeah. Now this one was 10.6 miles, so it was a, it was a bit of a hike. 
but it had a, a an estimated tip from para of like 13 bucks or something like that so i was like oh yeah heck yeah i'll go finish my day with a with a din tai fung now i kind of figured it was going to be pretty far because it was like deliver by 2 p.m and it was like 1 1 p.m when i got the order i'm like oh, okay well you think i'm gonna take an hour on this one huh uh yeah by 2 p.m uh, but then I looked at it and I was like, well, it's, it's on the freeway, so it shouldn't be too bad. So, and then, yeah, I had a peak pay going too, man. I really should have done it later in the day and gotten more peak pay, but probably would have been a lot more busy. So, confirm pickup. You know, Din Tai Fung is, uh, it was it was pretty busy, so it was a, it was a bit of a wait to get that pickup. Uh, but they got a real nice, yeah, there we go, cover my ass, store busy, long line, so on and so forth. Um, but they got a they got a real nice pickup setup at Din Tai Fung. So I, I give them, even though you got to park and find a way to get in and all that, it's uh, it, they got good orders, good, uh, good payouts, good tips on their orders. And uh, so, yeah, it definitely makes it worth it. Not going to confirm nothing. All right, so then I'm on my way. Uh, what do we got on this one? Leave it at the door. Oh, and this one, you know, these were nice people. I mean, they did a real good tip. It was all good. Get your camera oriented, get back, and figure out how to get the number in there. And there you go. All done. I should have I should have put a note in there to say, hey, thank you guys. It was a good tip. And I earned $75. I completed the challenge. Yay. $17 tip on that one. I mean, that's that, that, those are good. That's a good tip. That's a very good tip. Thank you, guys. So then I was like, well, I am done for the day. I made my 75 bucks, and uh, I got my video, and I think I'm going to go crunch some numbers. I'm sorry, C-Sweets Poke. I'll have to see you another time. It's busy. Keep earning. No thank you. So yeah, that was totally ridiculous. I was reacting to my own video, but I really do not want to re-record the narration. So let's crunch some numbers, shall we? Uh, I'm going to talk through some numbers for each of the days uh, and put some numbers up on the screen. So uh, so we'll start on Saturday, on the 14th. My starting mileage was 92,490. My ending mileage was 92,547. So that was 57 miles total. Uh, I dashed for uh, 252 minutes, so I don't know how much that is. I made it in minutes so I could calculate stuff. That's about 240. I dashed about five hours, a little under five hours. Uh, my gas cost on Saturday, I used about 2.78 gallons of gas. Uh, so my gas cost was about $9.74. So my mileage expense was about $33.06. So my, my total hard costs for Saturday were $42.80. So what I made on Saturday over, I did eight dashes on each day. Uh, I actually accepted eight dashes. So I made sixty-four seventy-five on Saturday. Uh, of that, twenty-nine seventy-five was from DoorDash. Thirty-four dollars was from tips, and there was a dollar of peak pay in there. Uh, there wasn't much peak pay going on. So my total was sixty-four dollars and seventy-five cents on Saturday. On Sunday. My starting mileage was 92,569. My ending mileage was 92,636. So that was 67 miles total. That makes my mileage expense, again, I'm using that 58 cents a mile. I know that's not optimal. Someone in the comments mentioned that uh, obviously that, you know, that's not going to be uh, applicable to all cars. You know, like if you drive a, a SUV, it's going to be, you know, you're going to be spending more than if you drive a little Prius. Uh, but I, I'm just got to have a number. So that's the number I'm using. So 58 cents a mile. Uh, my mileage expense would have been 38.36. Wait, 38.86. Uh, my total gas, I put in 3.27 gallons. That's about $11.44. So my hard cost for Sunday was $50.30. 
I dashed a little bit longer, I think, on Sunday. 9.45, 10.45, 11.45, 12.45. Well, actually, about four hours I dashed on Sunday. 229 minutes. So actually, I dashed a shorter amount of time on Sunday. And I made a whole lot more. Uh, so let's see here. I made $99.19. Uh, $29 of that was from DoorDash. $63.12 was from tip. So I made a whole lot more on Sunday because I got some really good tipping orders. Uh, I got a couple of Din Tai Fung orders and a, and a Cheesecake Factory order, and those had great tips. Uh, I also had like $7 peak pay on Sunday. And then, of course, I got that $75 bonus. So my total for Sunday was $174.12. Now, I mean, that $75, you can't really ascribe it to Sunday. It's kind of for both days because the challenge was for both days. So my total across two days was $238.87. And my hard cost across two days was $93.10. So that makes a profit of $145.77 over uh, the whole weekend, which is, is pretty good. Um, when you math out the hourly, though, uh, you know, after you've separated out the hard costs and you've got your $145 profit uh, over a total hours of about, you know, eight, nine hours, you're still looking at about eighteen dollars and eighteen cents an hour, which hey, it's better than it's better than minimum wage. It's it's still not you know one of the things that uh, I've been kind of you know investigating is you look at what DoorDash puts out about you know make an average of X Y Z an hour, and a lot of the numbers I see are like make you know dashers make up to twenty five dollars an hour. I think that is a is an exaggeration. If you see that number coming out from DoorDash, and I've seen different numbers coming out from DoorDash, so I mean that's just one that uh, stands out to me because I think it was in an NPR article, um, and I remember going twenty five dollars an hour. That seems pretty steep. Um, so. And maybe they're not taking hard costs into account. And it's very different when you look at the different days. So on Saturday, when you take my, uh, so my 64.75 I made on Saturday, when you separate out the hard costs, if I had just dashed on Saturday and like not made that bonus, like if I hadn't gotten to that bonus or I'd had to stop, uh, you know, my profit for just for Saturday uh, act after you take out the hard costs, I made like twenty-one dollar profit, twenty-one ninety-five. So that for the for the whatever four or five hours I spent on Saturday, uh, that maths out to an hourly of about five dollars and twenty-three cents an hour. So that Saturday wasn't that great, but then Sunday because I had some great orders with all those tips. My hourly, uh, you know, profit after my hard costs were taken out was about thirty-two forty-four. So that was a, that was a much better day on Sunday. So you know, the two days when you average them together, they average out. You know, had a bad day averaged out by a real good day by you know adding in that that bonus. So I thought that was pretty interesting. The other thing I thought was a bit interesting, you know, in my in my dash assault. I said, well, what, what would you have expected to make if you had been getting paid minimum wage, uh, that $14 an hour? So if we had been applying that calculation, so you would have expected to be reimbursed your hard costs and then be paid hourly for the amount of time you spent. So for Saturday, reimbursement for mileage plus hourly would have been $101.60. Sunday, again, expected uh, hourly minus an out or being reimbursed for those hard costs would have been 103.74. So 205.33 would have been, you know, if you'd just been an employee and you'd be getting reimbursed for your miles, you would have made about $205.33. And so what we actually made was 238.87. So that's a difference of, you know, that's a difference of, I didn't do the calculations. Let's see here. What is that a difference of? equals, let's do my little, I got my little spreadsheet here, equals that one minus that one, $33.54. So I made $33.54 more than if I had been getting paid minimum wage and be uh, getting reimbursed that 58 cents a mile. 
So uh, I think it's interesting. It kind of shows, obviously, that if you work really hard and you choose your orders and you don't just take any old order, uh, also using para and, and getting some insight there, definitely you're going to you're gonna do a whole lot better. Um, but I kind of thought maybe I'd do a lot, lot better or more a lot better. Um, doing $33.54 $33. over minimum wage better. Yeah, that, I guess that's not too bad. That's better than nothing. So anyway, that's kind of my uh, that's kind of my wrap up here. Uh, I just thought this was kind of interesting. I'm gonna continue to do these data uh, analysis exercises. Um, I know other folks on YouTube do these too, but you know, I just find them real interesting. All right, that's that for right now. Bye.